Hi there. Welcome to the practice number two in this course. In this practice, we're going to go through the procedure to create a logical standby database. We will use the virtual box appliance that we created in practice number one to create a logical standby database. As you will make a copy of the appliance that we created in the previous practice, you need to have at least 84 GB free space in your disk. In this practice, we're going to create a standby database that has the same specs as the one that we created in the last practice, except the standby database type will be logical standby. This practice will go through three phases. First, we have to prepare the practice environment. In the second phase, we have to implement some pre-creation steps. Those are the steps that you usually do before you create a logical standby database. And finally, we will go through the steps to create a logical standby database. As always, you will see this document attached to the lecture files. You can download it and go through it to implement it yourself. You can use this video as a guide on how to use this document. First, we have to prepare the practice environment. We will make a copy of the folder of practice one and rename it to practice two, logical standby database. Then we will add the appliances in that folder into the virtual box. This is the folder where we saved the practice one appliance files. I'm going to make a copy of it. I need now to rename the new folder. I rename it to practice two logical standby database. Then I need to add the appliances to the virtual box. I go to, to virtual box and select machine, add, go to that folder and add the primary database. Go to the same folder and add the physical standby database. This is the physical standby database that we created in the last practice. We need now to rename the standby database system to logical standby DB. I go to settings and then change the name to logical standby DB. I will start the appliance. I will start the second appliance. and wait for them to be up and running. When the two appliances are running, I will create putty sessions to both of them. Remember the white one is connected to the primary database and the green one is used to log in to the standby database. Now we have to make sure that the databases in both appliances are up and running. First, the primary database. The database is running, okay. Then the standby database. The database is running. If you see the database is not running, try to start it up. And finally, we have to start the redo apply process in the standby database. So I log in as sys in the standby database and run this command alter database recover manage standby database disconnect to start the redo apply or MRP process. 
In the second phase, we have to implement some steps that should be done before you create a logical standby database. First, in the primary database, you retrieve the list of unsupported objects. So you just run this command. Typing error. I need to fix it. SQL plus assist DBA. Yeah. So you need to inquire the DBA log standby or LOGSTDBY underscore unsupported view to obtain a list of unsupported tables. You need to examine those tables and study why they are not supported. Most likely, each of them has a column or more of unsupported data types. For example, you can observe that one of the tables in the list is customer's table, which is owned by the OE schema. You run the following query to have an idea why it's not supported. As you can see, the phone numbers column is of the array data type. And that is why this table is not supported by our configuration. Usually in such cases, you take actions to handle these unsupported tables. We will learn about how to handle unsupported tables in a logical standby database in a separate lecture. You also need to study the unsupported schemas. You should be aware that all tables in those schemas will not be replicated. And therefore, you need to make sure that this fact doesn't affect your application. In most cases, this is not an issue. This is the list of unsupported schemas. Any object in those schemas will not be included in the logical standby database replication. In the third step, you need to ensure that table rows in the primary database can be uniquely identified. So this inquiry has listed all the tables in the primary database that doesn't have a unique index or a primary database configured in it. For example, cell grade table in a scout schema doesn't have a primary key nor a unique index defined in it. I will create a table for testing and add a primary key to it. In the last stage of our practice, we are ready to create a logical standby database. As we have discussed in the previous lecture, you start creating a logical standby database by creating a physical standby database. So having a physical standby database is the starting point of creating a logical standby database. In the first step, you have to stop the redo apply process. In the second step, I have to build a log minor dictionary in the Redo data. This is as simple as running a single procedure, which is dbms log standby dot build. This procedure will do the job for us, but this procedure waits for all the transactions to be completed before it finishes. In the third step, we have to set the undo retention parameter to the value 3600. At the moment, in my case, it is set to 900, so I have to change it. The same value in the standby database, so I also have to change it over there.
Now, we are ready to execute the most important step, which is to convert the physical standby database into a logical standby database. So I need to shut down the database first. Start it up in mount exclusive state. And run the command alter database recover to logical standby followed by the new database unique name which is AuraDB underscore S2. We need now to reopen the database in mount mode. And when we open it, we have to use the reset logs option. And finally, I will start the SQL apply services. As you can see, the database is running in open mode and users can perform read-write operations on this database. To verify our configuration, I will run this query. This query retrieves the online Redo log files created in this database. So this standby database has online Redo log files. Remember, this is not the case in physical standby database. Physical standby databases don't have online read log files because you cannot open it for read-write operations. Also, as a test, I will insert a record in the primary database into our test table and then check it out in the logical standby database. So I run this insert statement in the primary database. After that, I will check that table in the logical standby database. The record doesn't yet appear in the standby database. I will keep running the same query multiple times. Eventually, after running the inquiry for a few seconds, actually, in my case, it was about a minute, I eventually see the record appearing in the table. In the last step of our practice, we have to set the valid for attribute of the log archive destination parameters. This must be done in all the databases. You need to define a location for saving the archived Redolog files generated from the online Redolog files and define another separate location for saving the archived Redolog files generated from the standby Redolog files. This should be done in all the databases in our data guard configuration. In the primary database, I will create a directory in FRA disk group to save the archived log files in it. I have to switch as a grid. Run ASMCMD utility. Then go to that folder and create a directory called archived redolog. I will then switch to Oracle user. Connect to the primary database as sysdba. Check out the log archive destination one. As you can see at the moment, it is pointed to the fast recovery area. We need to set the valid for attribute for that parameter. So I set the valid for attribute to online log file and all rows. which means this database will save in the 
FRA or the Fast Recovery Area, all the archived log files generated from the online read log files. We will check the uh, archive destination too. At the moment, it is pointing to the standby database, and the valid for is set to online log files and primary role. This is just fine, no problem with it. We need to define the third parameter, log archive destination 3, to set the location of the archived redolog files generated from the standby redolog files. Then I will make sure it is enabled. I have to do just the same in the standby database. First, I created the directory in the ASM. Then I set the parameters. You will not feel the importance of these changes at this stage until you need to switch over or fail over. If you don't set the valid for attribute properly, you will face troubles in performing switch over. So that's it for this practice. As you have seen, the procedure to create a logical standby database is actually simple. But in a production, you have to take your time in planning for it. I believe shutting down the databases and the system should be easy for you and you have the steps documented for you in the document. I hope this practice was helpful for you to learn the procedure to create a logical standby database. I will leave it there now and see you in the next lecture. Thank you.